Welcome to Vega in den Beruf, German for your career. Thank you for watching. This presentation will introduce you to German infinitive verb forms and the present tense conjugation pattern of German verbs. By the end of this presentation, you will have learned about the infinitive verb form in German and the basic conjugation pattern for German verbs. In addition, you will have learned about variations on this conjugation pattern for verbs with roots ending in D and T and verbs with roots ending in Z, S, or S set. There are also some irregular verbs that occur frequently, sein und haben, and we will take a look at these conjugation patterns as well. Finally, we will apply what you have learned to complete the associated online course activity. Let's get started. There are two components to the full infinitive construction in English, the particle to, which precedes the verb, and the verb itself. German, however, usually does not rely on a particle to form the infinitive, although one could say that the German infinitive form has two components, the verb root and the infinitive ending. This is the infinitive form that you will always find in German dictionaries. The verb you see on the screen, for example, sammeln, meaning to collect or gather, has the verb root, sam, and the infinitive ending, en. German verbs can also have the infinitive ending, ern, as you see on the screen of the verb wandern, meaning to hike or wander. A small number of German verbs have the infinitive ending, ihren, as you see on the screen with the verb reflektieren, meaning to reflect. The majority of German verbs, however, have the infinitive ending n, as you see on the screen with the verb wohnen, meaning to reside. As most German verbs have the infinitive ending n, the remainder of this presentation will examine the conjugation patterns for verbs with this infinitive ending. You can consult your course textbook or conduct a web search to find out more about the conjugation patterns for the other verbs. There are three basic steps for conjugating a German verb. The first step simply requires you to have a verb in the infinitive form. In the second step, you isolate the verb stem by removing the infinitive ending. For the verb you see on the screen, this means you drop off the infinitive ending n leaving you with the verb stem wohn. Next, in the third step, you add an ending to the verb stem from the basic present tense conjugation pattern. The verb ending must agree both in number and person with the subject of the sentence in order to create subject-verb agreement. In other words, if the subject of the sentence is ich, a first-person singular personal pronoun, then I am required to use the first-person singular verb ending from the conjugation pattern, ich wohne. This method of combining endings to the root of a verb according to the subject of the sentence is valid throughout the conjugation pattern. Du wohnst, er sie es wohnt, wir wohnen, ihr wohnt, sie wohnen. There are, however, some exceptions to this conjugation pattern. For verbs with a root ending in D or T, such as the verb finden, meaning to find, the conjugation pattern for the second and third person singular, as well as for the second person plural, inserts an extra E between the verb root and ending. This makes sense if you think about it, as without this extra vowel, the resulting three consonants would be very difficult to pronounce. Instead, what we have with the addition of the extra e is a very pronounceable verb conjugation pattern. Ich finde, du findest, er sie es findet, wir finden, ihr findet, sie finden. Likewise, for verbs ending in z, s, or s set, the basic conjugation pattern is slightly modified in order to make the verbs more pronounceable. In the example you see on the screen, the verb heißen to be called has a root ending in sz. In this case, the s in the second person singular ending st is dropped. 
This pattern results in the second and third person singular and the second person plural verb forms looking alike. Ich heiße, du heißt, er sie es heißt, wir heißen, ihr heißt, sie heißen. Finally, there are some verbs that are used very frequently and are irregular. These conjugation patterns simply need to be memorized. The conjugation pattern from the first verb, sein, or to be, is Ich bin, du bist, er sie es ist, wir sind, ihr seid, sie sind. For the verb haben, or to have, the be is removed from the end of the verb root in the second and third person singular. Ich habe, du hast, er sie es hat, wir haben, ihr habt, sie haben. Let's now take a look at how we could apply the present tense conjugation of pattern of German verbs. The explanations that follow will help you to complete the related online course activity. In the example you see on the screen, the infinitive verb sein or to be needs to be conjugated so that it agrees in both number and person with the subject of the sentence, mein Lebenslauf. Closer examination of the noun Lebenslauf reveals that it is the singular and not the plural form of the noun. Furthermore, I am not the Lebenslauf and neither am I talking directly to it, meaning that the subject of the sentence cannot be in the first or second person. By excluding these other options, I can deduce that Lebenslauf must be a third person singular masculine noun. I can test this deduction by replacing the noun with a personal pronoun, which is also in the third person singular. Now that I have determined that the subject of the sentence is in the third person singular, I take the infinitive of the irregular verb sein and look for, look for the matching third person singular form in the conjugation pattern. I then take this form, ist, and drop it into the sentence. The completed sentence, er ist hier, manifests subject verb agreement in that both the pronoun and the associate verb are in the third person singular. We can also do the same procedure with the infinitive of a regular verb, wohnen, or to live. We take the infinitive form, drop off the ending, add the ending for the third person singular from the basic conjugation pattern, and drop this form, wohnt, into the sentence. The completed sentence, er wohnt hier, manifests subject verb agreement in that both the pronoun and the associated verb are in the third person singular. This concludes the presentation on German infinitive verb forms and the present tense conjugation pattern of German verbs. Be sure now to test your knowledge by completing the related online course activity. Vega in den Beruf is a production of German studies at Elon University. The course is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike 4.0 International License. Don't be a square. Remix and share.